Previously, how do you do an intro for a vlog? I've just been realizing how many things can actually be done with scrap wood. I have some things that I want to make. His name is Marcus. Don't look him in the eye. Do not let your children play outside unsupervised. Do not walk alone at night. Oh no! <laughs> Thank you for joining me and welcome back. There's just something really nice about painting things. Subscribe, share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching. Keep being creative. And I'll see you next time. Turned out pretty cool. That sucks. What? No, nah, seriously. Like, that's like the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. I worked hard and on then, that. And then at the end, you like every other YouTuber. Like, oh, please subscribe because I need subscribers and money and stuff. And like, no. But, no. Hey, you, no. Yeah, I can say work on it and you'll get better, but no. Oh, and the whole pineapples thing? You're not Hawaiian, so that's racist. Hey, my name's Top of Not, and I'm famous. This is the video where I passed 500 subscribers. Congratulations, everybody. We made it. I made it. You, you didn't do anything. Don't even think about taking credit for my accomplishments. Yeah, it's kind of a low subscriber count for being on the platform as long as I have and having as many frighteningly well-edited videos as I do, but there's a reason why it's like that. See, for the past two years, I have been on a journey. I'm trying to break free of the traditional rules of making YouTube videos. I want to do things differently because I can. And that's how I'm going to show everyone that I'm more brilliant than them and I have better ideas. In my last video, I made a mistake. I slipped up and I asked you guys to subscribe. I didn't need to do that. Everyone does this. At the end of their video, they ask you to subscribe and smash the like button and click the notification bell. But I don't need to do that because you know where the subscribe button is. My job is just to make this the best video that this channel has ever seen. So that's what we're doing today. Now we can do better than my last video. In the last video, I'm, it just wasn't that great of a project. I painted stuff. It, Uncreative, unoriginal, boring. Do you know how many videos there are on YouTube of someone painting a picture of a pineapple? I counted and there are at least eight, maybe more. We can do better than that. We can do better than that. We need to come up with something so creative and original and outside the box that it blows everyone's minds and makes them think, how, how? That it will bezazzle the brains of everyone who lays eyes on it. Why do my hands look so enormous? We also need to come up with something cooler. Something really cool. It turned out really cool. That's not cool at all. Look how cool this is. That's like Picasso if he was an idiot. What about with the hat? Still not cool. Most people can't understand how a creative mind like mine works. People like me, who are few and far between, have such an abstract level of thought. It doesn't follow logic, it breaks free from the norm and enters a realm of things so far beyond your mind. What, what's a really scary animal? Like the scariest animal you can think of? Shark? No, like real life animals. Oh. The snake. Yeah, snake. The brainstorming process is surrealist in a way. It's like I go into this world in my head where nothing makes sense and up is down and all the clocks are melting and dripping. <sighs> Finally, I came up with the perfect idea and I set to work. Drawing the design took a lot of time. Planning the layout, making everything interwoven and seem randomized. One thing that saved a lot of time is instead of designing on the large cube, I cut a miniature cube and I drew the design on that and then copied it over to the big cube. There did end up being some dead space between the snakes and I'm hoping I can just kind of make that look like there is another snake down in there. The most challenging part was remembering that these are 3D snakes so when you can see one snake on one side of the cube, on the other side you see the same snake from a different perspective. So as you're drawing you have to remember that you can't have two snakes occupying the same space just because they're on two different sides of the cube. 
When it was time to break out the carving tool, I started by just cutting small grooves just to take the line art and make that three-dimensional. And once that was done, I finally started to deepen those grooves and eventually start defining the shape, the rounded shape of the snakes. Rounding down all of the edges on the cube really helped me to be able to visualize. One interesting thing I've learned since I started power carving is that you don't choose your burr based on the shape of the tip of the burr. I originally thought if I need a, a pointy burr to, to carve a groove or something like that, then I choose the long pointy one. But in most cases, you don't carve with the tip of the burr, you carve with the side. So I choose the long pointy burr if I need a flat side to smooth something over or go over a flat surface because it has a flat side. And if I want a pointy burr that can really dig into the wood, then I choose this one because from the side, it has a point. Bro, check it out. Look, look. Look what I'm making. What is it? It's gonna be a cube of snakes. It looks like I had like chicken wings from Zaxby's and then pooped and then made it into a cube. Hey, do you have a screwdriver I can borrow? Yeah. I was terrified that this thing was not going to turn out well. It really did not look like it for a long time. But I pushed forward, and finally, as I really started rounding out the details and defining all of the difficult spots, it really started to take shape and actually look like something. These pink stone burrs, I think, are actually meant for like sharpening metal knives. But I have found that for really complex shapes like this, where it's really hard to use sandpaper, these are perfect for sanding to a smooth finish. You can actually get the wood looking shiny just by using these. And they won't necessarily give you a perfect finish, but that's usually not something that I'm going for. Let's stop and read some comments. I like cookies says he's back with an eh face. Short, simple comment. I see this one a lot actually because I upload so infrequently. Every time I re-upload, somebody's like, hey, he's back. Because I've always been gone for a really long time. But honestly, I always appreciate it. It makes me feel really good that when I do upload, you guys think it's noteworthy and comment worthy. The little, the little smiley face with the colon and the D is so happy, it makes me happy. Because make stuff fun, yay. Words to live by. From Philip DeRossier. DeRossier, I should know how to say your name by now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for misquoting me. He, he misquoted me uh, in the video. It was because make stuff, yay, fun, but because make stuff fun, yay, sounds so much better that I ended up using it in my channel banner. So thanks, Philip. Jacob Fowles Knight. I honestly don't understand how you don't have more subscribers than you currently have. I guess it's just because the YouTube algorithm just isn't cool. Thank you, Jacob, so much. This is another one that I get really frequently saying, why don't you have more subscribers? And truth is, it is because of what I said in the beginning of the video. It's because I don't chase the algorithm. I just pretty much make what I want to make and I try to, to do things differently. Everybody follows the same formula and I hate it. Fortunately, I think as I've been experimenting for the past couple of years, I'm getting really close to a style that I think both I will like and the algorithm will like. Maybe, we'll see. Philip's comment from the actual video, those were from the teaser. He's responding to the part where I said, I'm working on new videos, I promise. He says, I felt that, but at least it makes new content all the more special. Good job, the video flowed very well, entertaining till the end. Thank you so much. If you read, <laughs> if you read the description of my videos, usually I put in there if I'm not happy with it. That was one of them. There were things that I liked, there were things that I didn't like. I'm very, very self-critical. But thank you so much for, you liked my video. And I'm glad. Oh guys, uh, subscribe to Philip, please. Is this the right account? Hang on. I will link him in the description. He makes these incredible animations of video game characters. He has his own original series with his own original characters called Nick the Sprite, and I voice one of the characters. His name is Leo, he's a nerdy sidekick, and the series is hilarious. We finished episode one, which is in three parts, and then he's working on episode two right now. I've already given him my lines for that. It's great, you gotta see it. Please, for me, go watch Nick the Sprite. Dio the Creative, making a world a better place, one pineapple at a time. Exactly, exactly, exactly.
the end, the scaling turned out really good. Having that added texture and the consistent pattern really makes this something to look at. Now the pounding of the hammer actually damaged the wood quite a bit. It put a lot of stress on the wood, there was a lot of pressure from different directions and it caused some like splitting and splintering and cracking. But I have an idea to potentially fix that by smoothing it over with a coating that'll cover up all those imperfections. Swords are cool, but I don't have a sword. Uh, yeah. And other things that rappers say. Black paint water, mix it up, make it hotter. If we're talking about temperature, cold-blooded, I prefer. Spread on a thin coat, dark is the base note. Every inch covered, we don't want a light show. Adding in wood glue, now we're on step two. Paint and adhesive, we're making a new goo. Hiding the roughness and filling the cracks too. Smooth scale sailing looks like it could bite you. Before and after, sadness and laughter. Venom and antidote, dodge a disaster. Now for some color to brighten the darkness. Slow motion footage, I want you to watch this. Spray it from all sides, evenly colorize. Careful, it's wet paint, wait for the dry prize. Don't get impatient and ruin the surprise. Here for a glimpse, I'll illuminate your eyes. Plain flat copper is not where we're stopping. We're bringing out details and leaving them popping. Thin it down, paint it on, don't leave it too long. Taking it back off, wiping the black off. Only the deep parts stay in the shadows. Where the light touches is not where the paint goes. So satisfying to see how it's working. Maybe inside it, a snake head is lurking. Normally, I don't even like time lapses. Cuts to the beat. I say that's where the fun is, but right at this moment, I don't even care. Are there one or a million Ophidians in there? Constricting or venomous, viper or mamba, garter snake, copperhead, python or boa. Color ambiguous, serpentine mystery, number unknowable, wrapped in geometry. I know you're kind of bummed out about Marcus, so I made you this. Oh wow. Is that the snake cube? Yeah. It doesn't look like poop anymore. I guess it's kind of cool. Is it really? This thing doesn't really feel like wood anymore. It feels like plastic, I guess because of the glue layer. <sighs> Still smells like paint though. It doesn't smell like snakes. What do snakes smell like? Somebody who has snakes, comment. Tell me what they smell like. I'm curious now. I am quite satisfied with how this turned out. This has got to be one of the coolest things I've ever made, honestly. Making this, I learned the same lesson that I almost always learn every time I make something. Uh, don't give up. If, if you have an idea, go for it. And even if it doesn't look like it's going to turn out the way you want it, keep going because it's going to turn out better than you think. Now, why do I make these videos? It's because I want to inspire you to make your own artwork. So here's what I want you to do. Make something. Make anything. Send a picture of it to topplenaut at gmail.com and I will feature it in a video. Guys, I know it's a pipe dream, but I would love to one day be able to do this full time. Whether it works out or not, I'm going to be trying anyway. But there are a couple things that you guys can do to help me. One, you can comment. Comments give me content. Comments give me content. Ask me funny questions, uh, also serious questions. I'd love to answer some more serious questions about art or literally anything. That's something that I want to involve more in the videos is me responding to comments. And three, if you have a creative friend, share the video with your creative friend and tell them you can get your artwork featured on the channel. That kind of stuff just really helps me out and might help to get this thing rolling again. What else can you do for me? Well, I'm not entirely thrilled with this backdrop animation. Uh, <laughs> it's weird. If you can do a better one than this, please hit me up. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep being creative. And I'll see you next time. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, man. Now what'd you do to my screwdriver?
name is Marcus. Don't look him in the eye.